Hi everyone and welcome to episode 7 of the Willow Cove Crafts podcast, a podcast about knitting and sewing and my other crafty endeavors. My name is Emily and you can find me on both Ravelry and Instagram as Willow Cove Crafts, all one word, no capital letters. Um, everything I talk about today will be down below in the show notes of this video. So if you want to follow up on anything I talk about today, you can find more information below. Today is Sunday, July 25th, and it is hard to believe that the summer is... I'm not gonna say it's coming to an end, but you know, we're at the end of July. So a good two thirds of the way through. Uh, time just flies these days. It's a little scary. So trying to find uh, lots of moments to knit, but the the weeks are just going by faster than than I expect. So it's hard to believe that fall is just around the corner. I think it's gonna be here before we know it and hopefully we will all be able to wear our fun hand knits that we've been working on all, all of this warm season. I really hope you cannot hear my neighbor's dog. It's losing its mind at the moment. It does that from time to time. So hopefully you can't hear it, but if you do, uh, there's not much I can do about uh, the little dog in the background that is barking. Um, hopefully it stops. It usually doesn't last too long. Um, it has been about two weeks since I last recorded and we have been up to quite a few things. One of our friends was in town um, last weekend up through yesterday. So we have been spending a lot of time with him. Um, he used to live in Madison, but has since moved away. And one of the things he really wanted to do while he was in town was visit all of his uh, favorite Madison restaurants. So we were out and about eating a lot. I feel like we have eaten out more in the last week than we have in any other single condensed period of time um but it was really good um i feel like i forgot to mention i live in verona wisconsin which is a suburb of madison if you're at all familiar with the area um so yeah we've been doing that and then yesterday was really my first day yesterday being saturday was my first day in a while where uh, we haven't really had many plans and so I was able to sit and knit like all afternoon yesterday from like 2 p.m. to the time I went to bed and it was super glorious. I, um, I'm not super into being busy. I prefer, you know, a bit more of a slower lifestyle and so I think you know, it's maybe just part of the times. Like it's summer and uh, restrictions have been lifted here for the time being. And so I think, you know, people are just trying to pack in all of the things that we haven't been able to do for the last year and a half, um, which is really great. And I do love those things, but I, enjoy also having some time to just relax and sit. Um, I'm sure a lot of you out there are similar uh, if you're into, you know, making things, you know, having an afternoon to just sit and knit or so is, you know, really, really something I look forward to when those moments come around. So, um, I think August and the beginning of September are going to continue to be a bit busy as we're wrapping up the summer, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that once it starts to get chilly out, things will 
calm down a little bit and I'll be able to spend a lot more time making than I have been over the last couple months. Let's get into some knitting content. I have a finished object this week and if you have watched my previous episodes, you will know that I have been working on this object since I started podcasting back in April. Um, I have finished my sumac sweater. The sweater that felt like it was never going to end has concluded and I'm really excited about it. Um, the yarn I used is Cascade 220 in the eggplant colorway. That's a 100% worsted wool yarn. It's pretty standardly available. Um, but here is my finished sweater. It's hard to fit into the screen. Let me if I scooch back a little bit, you'll be able to see it. It's got a bit of a shadow on it. But like I said, for a worsted weight sweater, this felt like it was taking a very long time to finish. Um, real quick, before I talk about the sweater, I took some video. Again, it's harder to show uh, finished, larger finished things in this screen. Um, so I do like to take some video of some of my bigger finished objects, um, just so you can see how it fits, how it moves. I personally really like to see those things when um, other people show their finished objects. Um, it's really helpful sometimes to see, especially garments, how they sit on, you know, a body versus, you know, just kind of flat and being held up. So I will insert that here and then we'll talk about it. Yes, the sumac sweater for the final time um, is a worsted weight sweater and it features uh, towards the top this textured panel. You've got a couple different textures going on and then the body of the sweater is this all over uh, diagonal sort of pattern and then the sleeves has a kind of a vertical texture to it. And then I don't know if I've ever drawn attention to this in my past episodes, but there's also a side panel. So underneath the armpits, all the way down to the side, there's this uh, additional panel of textured stitches, which I think looks really cool. So all in all, it was a pretty fun project to work on, especially towards the top when you were, you know, changing things up pretty frequently. But yes, towards the bottom, I started to lose a bit of steam, just kind of doing this uh, diagonal texture over and over and over again. Um, I did make the largest size, which I didn't measure my actual sweater, but the pattern, uh, I think it ultimately ends up being 50 and a half inches. And I have a 45 inch bust and so it gives me a bit of positive ease um, and I think that's pretty apparent in my video where I was wearing it that it is a little bit oversized not majorly oversized but it's definitely got some room in it um, and I'm really happy with how it turned out it's really cozy I took that video right before filming this and um, it's 90 some degrees out today. It is not the day to be wearing a wool sweater and I was sweating. Um, 
but really excited to, to get this one out in the fall when it starts to get cool and wear it. Um, a couple modifications I made. I did lengthen the body of the sweater by, I believe, about two inches. Um, I'm pretty tall. I'm 5'9", so a lot of things end up being a bit shorter on me. Um, not usually a problem, just add a little bit of length. There's no waist shaping in this sweater, so that wasn't something I had to really think about. Um, it's knit just straight down after you split for the sleeves. Uh, so just added a little bit of length. My other modification, it's not really a modification. I, I talked about this previously. When I got to the bottom ribbing, I did not have um, my extra needles with me. And so I did not end up going down two needle sizes for the bottom ribbing like the pattern called for. I just used, uh, I believe the body is knit in a size seven and then the ribbing called for a size five. Um, but I just knit the ribbing in a size seven. And I think uh, you can definitely tell I knit the sleeves as called for and the ribbing definitely looks a bit tighter on the sleeves, obviously, because it's knit with a smaller needle. Um, I don't know if I would recommend that approach. It's fine, you can't really tell, um, but I do think things look a little bit cleaner if you go down a needle size for your ribbing. Um, what else? I think that's it for this sweater. I. Again, I'm super happy it's done. I felt like, you know, for a worsted weight sweater, it took a really long time. I don't know what the deal was, uh, but now it's finished. And I, as you will see later, have uh, started a new sweater. So I'll share that in a little bit. On to knitting works in progress. I have got four works in progress three that you have seen before if you've watched my previous episodes and then one new one that I started uh, since I finished my sweater. So I'm going to start with the ones you have seen before or that I've shown before. Uh, first up, I have a pair of vanilla socks on the go. Um, the yarn I am using is called Coloration by Ogle Design. It's underneath this plastic. It's like a sticker, so the glare on that is pretty bad. Um, but hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, I don't think there's a colorway name. It just looks like the, the line of yarn and then the designer. But it is an 80% super wash merino, 20% nylon sock yarn. And um, it came in two cakes like this because as you can see, it ombres, it fades. And since last episode, um, I put this marker where I was last time I recorded and I am getting pretty far on the first sock. I finished the leg, did the heel, and I'm now, I would say, about halfway down the foot. And I love how these are turning out. I think they look really cool, you know, with that fading from this uh, brick red um, almost to white. Um, what I did for the heel, because I didn't want to interrupt the fading was I pulled some yarn from the opposite end of the cake. So again, it goes from a really deep red to a really light whitish pink. Um, so I pulled from that end of the ball to make my heel so that the rest of the sock could continue uh, fading as intended. And I think that looks really cool. I, it almost looks like it fades into the heel itself, obviously a little bit more abruptly. Um, but yeah, I think it makes it look really cohesive without uh, technically being a contrast heel. Um, but yeah, I am doing 64 stitches. I did a two by two rib at the top, heel flap and gusset. This is kind of my 
standard sock recipe. Uh, these are gonna be for me, so I'm making them a women's size 10. And I'm getting pretty close to finishing up my first sock. And I love how they're turning out. I think they're super fun. So hopefully uh, I'll finish up the first sock before I record next. Uh, not that I'm in any rush to finish these socks are, uh, I've mentioned before, I just kind of work on them here and there, usually when I'm out of the house. Uh, I don't typically work on my socks like in the evening after I get home from work. Uh, it's definitely more of a travel project. So sometimes I work on it a lot. Sometimes I hardly work on them at all. Um, but yeah, these are super fun. Next up is my Hilda Bear shawl by Fiber Tails. Um, the rows are getting really long on this shawl, so it doesn't like look like I did a lot on it, but I really did. Um, when I said that I knit for probably close to eight hours yesterday, this is what I worked on. Um, and here it is. So I put a marker as always where I was the last time I recorded. And so I've put about two inches on the shawl. And like I said, the rows are getting long. It's got bobbles. And so the bobble rows just take a super long time to complete, especially over so many stitches. Uh, but it is chugging along. I calculated yesterday that I have, did I, I did write it down. I have 19 rows left on the body of the shawl before I can start the applied border, which I'm super excited about. This shawl has a really pretty cabled border. Um, and we're approaching the finish line of the bobble section. Uh, so yeah, judging by how long it takes me to do a row, I'm not sure if I'll finish the body of the shawl by the next time I record, but it's a pretty decent goal, I suppose. You can kind of see how big it's getting. I have it on a 50 inch cord and it's just about at the edges of that cord. So super pretty, it's so soft. I love working on this, even though uh, the bobbles are a bit tedious. Um, I'm really enjoying it. The yarn I am using is Knit Picks Preciosa, which is a 100% single ply fingering weight wool. Um, and this is in the undyed bear colorway, which is a kind of, you know, I think you can tell that the tag is a true white. And so the bear yarn is a kind of yellowy cream color. And uh, we'll just keep chugging along. I cannot believe I am still on my first ball of yarn. And I feel like this thing is getting pretty big. I, and I still have a significant bit of that first ball left. That's crazy. So I have three skeins allotted for this, but I am curious how much of that third one I will use, if any. Because these skeins are really, really lasting a long time. So, yep, I think I will be, continue to work on that one for a while. It's not really anywhere close to being done. Sorry, I've seen the same car drive by outside like three times and every time he drives by, it's like really slow. It's a little weird. Anyways, um, that is once again the Hilda Bear Shawl by Fiber Tales. Uh, Loving it.
super fun. Next up is my Slip Stravaganza blanket by Stephen West. And uh, the rows are getting long on this one as well. Um, here it is. Last episode, I was where my croissant is hooked on there. So oh, I only got a, a handful of rows done on this, but I think it looks smaller because it's in a circle, but there's like over 400 stitches on the needle at the moment. So each row is a bit lengthy. Um, but yep, I am working on what Stephen West calls in the pattern, um, the column section, I believe. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this is a Stephen West pattern, if that was not clear. Um, and I'm about halfway done with that column section. So I am obsessed with how this is looking. I love this color palette so much. Um, it's soft, but it has like some real, real nice punches of color. And the colors are all like a little bit earth toned, which I really like kind of paired with those lighter pastels. I think it looks really great. The yarn I am using is the yarn that is called for in the pattern, which is the West Wool Tandem. It is 10% Texel, 90% Falkland Merino. It is a DK weight. And I finally went and looked it up. I thought Texel was a synthetic fiber, but it is not. It is a breed of sheep. So the more you know. Um, which I wish I would have looked up sooner because I have not been spit splicing this yarn because I thought it had synthetic fiber in it and that it wouldn't splice, uh, but it should if it's 100% wool. Uh, so moving forward, I will use that technique. Um, the colors I am using, I will go through the colors this time around and see if I can remember them, but my main color is called White Peach, and it's just the most beautiful stuff, Peach. Um, but then kind of going through here, the yellow color is called Glow. The light blue, I believe, is called Glass. The darker teal is called Norway. Pink is called Rose with a. The white is called Birch Tree. And the orangey red is called Cardamoma. And then I haven't used it yet, but I have a gray. And I don't remember what that one is called. Um, yes, some modifications that I did want to talk about and kind of go into a bit of detail on this week is color management. Um, if you are familiar with this pattern at all, you will know that Stephen West calls for three contrast colors. You have your main color and then three different contrast colors. And I obviously have more than three contrast colors. I have seven contrast colors, which I thought would not really be an issue. And ultimately it's not an issue but I was kind of looking ahead in the pattern this week and I had the realization that towards the end of the pattern, one row is going to take up a lot of yarn. And um, Stephen West does a really great job in this pattern of telling you roughly how much yarn you can expect to use in each section. And I was looking at the last section of the pattern which is a chevron border and one of the chevron stripes takes 75 grams of yarn was the estimate he gave which is almost a full skein obviously these skeins of yarn are 100 grams the the tandem dk are 100 gram skeins and so if one of those stripes takes 75 grams like that is nearly a full skein, obviously, 
Um, and so I was thinking about it and, you know, I at maximum have two skeins of each of these colors. Um, I have two skeins of all of them, except the yellow, I have one skein and then the gray that I haven't used, I only have one skein. And so I was like, I don't want to get to the end of my blanket and have to, like I definitely have enough yarn in total yardage wise, but I don't want to like run out of yarn for one of the stripes um, because they take so much. Um, I hope that makes sense. So I kind of, you know, spent, and it took me a while to like calculate it all out, um, but I kind of looked at, you know, what I've used so far and what each of the sections call for. And, you know, I sorted out, you know, what colors I was going to use where for the remainder of the blanket to make sure, hopefully, if I did my math correctly, and if the estimates are correct, uh, to make sure that I, you know, don't get into that situation towards the end of the blanket where, you know, I'm working on one of those big chevron stripes and have to uh, make them thinner or, you know, kind of use two colors and one stripes. I really don't want to have to do that. I like the look of the color breaks as they are. Um, so hopefully it all works out. Um, it's going to be a while until I find out if my math is correct because I have to knit the whole blanket. Um, but yes, uh, I would recommend if you are planning on making this blanket and are planning on not uh, really following his suggestions for contrast colors to uh, really think about how much you have of each color and make sure uh, that things are going to uh, work out especially towards the end of the blanket when your rows are getting really, really long. Um, but yes, I am loving it. Like I said, I figured it out. I think things are going to end up being fine. Um, but yeah, slowly working away on that one. I have no idea when I'm going to finish that blanket. I would love to finish it before the end of the year. But really, that's arbitrary. I don't know. I'll finish it when I finish it. Next up is my new sweater project. I have really been craving knitting with mohair. I really, really, for some reason, have been wanting to work on a mohair sweater. Um, so that is what I am doing. I want to emphasize that this is not a new project. Um, I went and rescued this from my pile of unfinished projects in my closet. Um, so I did not knit all of this since last episode, um, but I have never shown this on the podcast before. Um, so before any of you go thinking that I'm some sort of like speed knitting savant, that is not the case. Um, but I am knitting the No Frills sweater by Petite Knit and this is what it is looking like. I put a marker in where I uh, started knitting on it again since the last episode. So I've put maybe probably less than an inch on it. Um, but it's so pretty and it's so soft. And it's so encouraging to pick up a sweater and it kind of feels like a new project because I haven't worked on it in so long and to have it uh, be so far along. I think I started this maybe two years ago at this point um, and it's just been like sitting in a bag. So sad. Um, the yarns I am using, um, if you're not familiar with the no frills pattern, it calls for a fingering weight and a mohair held double. Uh, so my fingering weight yarn is this light speckly blue. And this is Linne yarns, I believe is how it's pronounced. I've heard people say Linne and I've heard other people say Linne. 
And so if you know with absolute certainty how to pronounce this, please let me know. Uh, but this is the Tears colorway and it is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Again, that is a fingering weight. And then my mohair is this, which it's pretty accurate. It's like a, this, it's a little more purple in real life. It's this very light purpley bluish gray. And it's got a little bit of variation, you can see. Uh, but this is less traveled yarn. The colorway is Whisper. And it is a 72% kid mohair, 28% silk yarn. And I picked this up at, I always like to call out when I buy yarn from like special places, but I bought this at Stitches Midwest, which I've been to once two summers ago, and then it got canceled last summer, and then I think it's also canceled this year. Um, but maybe next year I'll be able to go again. Um, Stitches Midwest is held in Schaumburg, Illinois, I believe. Um, I don't know if it's in the same place every year, but I think it was in Schaumburg when we went. So my friend Carolyn and I took a little day trip down to Illinois. It's about two and a half, three hours from here. Um, and we went to Stitches Midwest and it was super fun. And we both spent too much money, um, myself more than Carolyn. Um, but yes, these are the arms, you know, together. And then knit up they create a really nice effect. I think, you know, this blue ends up looking a little bit more dusty held with the uh, kind of more purpley mohair. But yes, the no frills sweater is a pretty basic raglan sweater. It's got a little bit of shaping in the back to uh, kind of raise back neck a little bit and then you do pretty standard raglan increases and then uh, the body is knit straight down. Uh, I think what really makes this sweater special is uh, that addition of mohair. Um, I, when I picked this back up last week I tried it on and it's fitting really well. Uh, this was I started this sweater before I really got in the habit of gauge swatching, so I was a little nervous. It just looked small to me, um, but I tried it on and it's fitting great. I think I got lucky there. You should always gauge swatch for your sweaters. I used to not, and it didn't always turn out well for me. Uh, but anyway, it fits well, and I actually am getting pretty close to being done with the body I have maybe like three or four centimeters left of stock in it and then I will start the bottom ribbing and then it'll be on to the sleeves so yes I love it I think it looks so good um and yeah it feels really nice to have taken uh you know, casting on new projects is such a thrill. I, I'm sure I don't have to uh, explain that to any of you. Uh, but, you know, I'm trying to be a more responsible knitter. And so, you know, it also felt very good to uh, pick up a project that has kind of been languishing and not getting a lot of love and, um, you know, to start working on it again and kind of realize how close I was to finishing it. And now, you know, I think this sweater will uh, knit up pretty quickly now that I'm working on it again. So yes, that is the, once again, no frills sweater by Petite Knit. And that is it for knitting content. So we will move on briefly to sewing content. I haven't done a ton of sewing over the last couple weeks. I am trying to um, prioritize sewing one 
night a week. Um, you know, I do like quilting and garment sewing, um, but knitting I think really is my first love. Um, and, you know, I think that is a breakdown that I can, you know, make happen is, you know, trying to sew one night a week to make some progress on uh, what has become a sizable fabric stash for me. Um, but uh, since last episode, I, you know, introduced my uh, baby blanket that I am making for my friend Amanda. And since last time I have finished sewing together all of my strips. Um, oh, I didn't even mention, I am making the Trippy Quilt by Southern Charm Quilts. And I am making the quilt a little bit smaller than the pattern calls for uh, to make it into a baby blanket for my friend's little boy that is being born in December. Um, so again, I finished uh, doing all of my strip piecing for all of my uh, blocks and now I've started actually constructing some of the blocks. So I have only gotten about three blocks done, um, but Again, the strip pacing took a while, so this is not representative of all of the sewing I got done this week, but um, it is kind of a, a finished module of the quilt that I can show you pretty easily. Um, so here's my first block, and as you can kind of see, the trippy quilt, um, it is essentially just a square patchwork pattern, um, but you end up with blocks that have uh, diagonals of like fabrics. And all of these blocks use the same fabrics just with a different kind of main center diagonal. So here's my second one. And here is my third. And I have a lot of other fabrics that are going to go in here, but these were kind of a group that went together. And then the way the quilt will come together ultimately and you know you could do it a couple different ways but how i'm going to do it is the blocks are going to alternate their direction and so they will come together kind of like this and then you know obviously you know you'll have some below and above kind of alternating direction and you end up with this kind of diamond shape and because of those lines of like fabric it looks you know, it creates a diamond, but it looks kind of, you know, fractured is the, the word that comes to mind. Um, and I think it looks really cool. Um, and I talked about this quite a bit last episode, but I love these fabrics for a baby quilt. I think they're not like in your face baby, uh, but they're still like very soft and sweet. Um, very calming to me. I, I love looking at these fabrics together. And I love the amount of neutrals that are in there, the amount of black and white and gray mixed with the blue. And then you've got like little pops of gold every once in a while. I think it's gonna look really cool. So I will continue to work on that over the next couple weeks. It is a baby blanket, so it's not super big. Uh, so I'm hoping it comes together pretty quickly. And that is it for me this week. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me. If you liked what you see, please give the video a thumbs up and like and subscribe so that you can be notified when my future videos come out. I hope you all are having an amazing summer and getting a lot of knitting and crafting done. Uh, and I will talk to you all again in about two weeks. Bye everyone.